Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm gonna go over why I think this IBM X3650 model 1 is a great beginners home server home lab server it has many names I get asked this question quite often in the comments I'm new to servers and I want to get some servers which one should I get what should I buy what should I what should I what should I I want to address that in this video so that um, I've already said that so I can point back and say I said that in that video go watch that and um, well that's what I'm up to today I'm always recommending this IBM X3650 model 1 because it's an awesome server and you get it really cheap I've seen this down to like $90 for a rather well equipped server but mostly have to pay a little bit more to get um, the amount of RAM and the CPUs and the stuff that you really want in a server like that I want to make this scenario that you are going out and buying your first server I'm recommending this one and what you are looking for is um, I have a note here I have written that this is the IBM System X 3650 Model 1 you want one of those how high can I go here I can go up here there it has some good features for example it uses it uses Xeon CPUs there is room for two Xeon CPUs in the server both of them can go up to be quad cores and this is important because this server is available in an old version and a new version this model of server comes with two different system boards and it's really hard to see from the outside which system board is the one that you want to get and you want to get the one that can run the Xeon 5400 series if it can run the Xeon 5400 series it can also run the 5300 and the 5100 and the 5200 series which is not that common but you want the one that can run the 5400 series so we're gonna put that up there and they're available up to 3.4 gigahertz I think quad core 3.4 we want that and to make sure to get that you find this let's zoom in on that this product ID if you type that in Google this product ID maybe IBM and then this product ID and you search for E5450 if um, if used servers pops up with that processor installed you would be good this server actually comes as a standard with a 3 gigahertz quad core 5400 series so this one I know is good this one is a different model it's in the same 7979 which they all are but this is a 41U this is not able to do the 5400 series type that in Google and search for the 5400 series so it's a good idea to get the right one because the the one that can do the 5400 series can also do the three other series but it doesn't go the other way around the one that can do the 3 series can't do the last 5400 series so well you want to get that so make sure that it it can do that series the next good feature about this server is that being a real server it can handle 48 gigabytes of ram and this is quite a lot even from today's standard and this is a quite old server it's from 2006 2007 so 48 gigabytes of ram is very nice to have in a home server and being able to expand to that so that is awesome there is 12 ram slots in there and it's divided in different banks and stuff you can't if you only have one cpu you can't use all 12 of them but if you have two cpus you can use all 12 they um, have to be installed in pairs I've done multiple videos um, upgrading them with RAM but yeah you want that too you don't want 48 gigabytes of RAM you want as much as you can afford and as much as you can get no harm to have some extra RAM in your server this server is also equipped in two editions one of them can do three and a half inches hard drives which are the ones that I have here they look like this three and a half inches hard drive right and it's also available in a two and a half inch hard drive type so I kind of recommend this three and a half inch uh, hard drive type thing this server has six bays three and a half inch hard drives and each bay can handle a two terabyte drive that makes it 
can handle a total of 12 terabytes. I did a video on that, so go back and see that. You don't have to put in six two terabyte disks. You could put in six 750 gigabyte disks or six something else. You could also put in six different sizes disks, which I will get right back to, but it has that six space for for available disk space. It, um, it can use SATA and it can use SAS. For home use, I would recommend SATA drives because they're cheaper and bigger. So, well, next feature of this being a, a real server means that it also has a management adapter inside. This server is equipped with a management adapter. It can come without one. And um, it's not a big deal because you can you can buy a management adapter on, on Amazon. I've seen them down to $19. It's a really nice feature to have that. You have you get a web interface where you can power on and off your server. You can you can remote control the server even though it's off, and um, you can go into the BIOS of the servers remotely and stuff like that. Turn them on and off. I um, I would get that. Also, it has two one gigabit network cards on the back, which is very nice. You might go ahead and get some more. You could um, expand that with, um, here is a card for, for one gigabit, but you could also go ahead and get some 10 gigabit or something like that. I don't think, for home use, I don't think it's widely used. So, um, that comes with the server. So where do you get a server like this? Well, Amazon, eBay, Craigslist, whatever, I would get it used. These are not available new anymore, but get a good used one. They're awesome. I've never had one of these really crash dead boom bang on me, ever. Um, occasionally a disk dies, have had bad a bad memory block, actually only a couple I think, but. The drives, they die like any other thing. But get a good server with kind of these specs. And what do you do with it? You, When you get a brand new good server, like, it's not brand new, is it? When you get it, when, when you get your new server, you wanna make sure that it's, um, well, you need to firmware update it, actually. That's a good place to start. You need to firmware update your server. And I have done videos on how to firmware upgrade a IBM server like that so um, might search my channel for that or I might just link it I'll see what I do when you get it you gotta make sure that you have enough RAM for what you need it for for what I'm gonna be suggesting here I do not recommend less than 8 gigabytes of RAM and this is really manageable the memory for these servers it's not very expensive anymore and you e you really just need two four gigabyte RAM slots to to be able to run that. Eight gigabytes of RAM is a, is reasonable. Everything over that is top notch. And if you can, you want to get four gigabyte blocks for this server because, well, a memory block it does use power and and it works that way that one block more or less uses the same amount of power if it's a one gigabyte block or a four gigabyte block. So you get three extra gigabytes of memory for free power or something. So if you can get four gigabyte blocks for the server, and remember you need two at a time. If you want to expand it, you need two new blocks every time. So get enough memory, get more memory I've written here. And eight gigabytes um, would be the minimum, I think. You could do it with less, but uh, you don't want to. So memory again. And when you have the memory, you need to install the hard drives. So you need the, the six drives that you're gonna put in this. And for those, you need some... You need some of these to slide them into the server in a nice way. And these are widely available. You could buy them. Maybe there's some will follow the server if it comes with some hard drive or something like that. But otherwise you could use you could buy some old hard drives. Make sure that they are, make sure they fit the server, and um, you can put in the SATA drives in these, and they fit very well. <laughs> I would recommend just filling it up with um, 
good old hard drives. They don't need to be new. You can just use whatever. For, for what I'm planning here, you can use whatever you want. I would recommend booting the server on something else. There is two options really. Um, you can boot it on a USB stick. Uh, unfortunately, this server only has USB 1. So it's a bit slow on booting. Not to say it's ridiculously slow at booting, but well, it gets there eventually and you're not gonna be booting your server too often. There is also the option of putting a smaller drive inside, like a... You could put a, a small SSD inside the server to boot on that. I did a video on how to install an, an internal hard drive in this model of server. I'll link the video. It would be good to boot on that because it's a lot faster than, than booting a USB. I would not recommend you to boot on these actually, because uh, we're going to be using those for something else. But you need to go into the RAID controller and pass through the hard drives one by one. That's what I would recommend. So you, you put in six drives and you tell the RAID controller to deliver the six drives to your operating system in there. I have shown a video, another video on how to do that, so might link that too. We got that. And what I really recommend for this uh, home server, I really recommend VMware ESXi 6.0, newest edition you can get your hands on to. And it works flawlessly on this server. I haven't ever had a problem on the IBM X3650 Model 1. It just runs. You don't have to install no drivers or anything. It just goes right through it. It's awesome. Install that on the USB stick that you put on the back or on the solid state drive or hard drive that you put inside and you're good to go. Then I recommend you install a NAS server inside because often home servers are used for multimedia centers and stuff like this. I have played with this Exponology and I'm really fond of it and that's why I recommended that you could put in any hard drive They don't have to be the same size because Exponology can use Different sizes hard drives and give you one drive security on that and it uses all the space So Exponology otherwise you can use um, FreeNAS also It's not quite as good in, in this prospect and FreeNAS will eat a lot more of your memory than the Exponology. Exponology, you can install that with one gigabyte of RAM and it's probably not gonna be using all of it, but well, I installed mine with two gigabytes of RAM and it's um, perfectly fine with that and it's not using all the RAM. So, And it's possible to install VMware tools so that it can share the RAM better. So I recommend that, it's something you could should do something you should do i have a video on that <sighs> then i have something that i haven't made a video on and that's um, you can actually install a vmware router on this new machine that you just got it has two network cards so you can have your internet connection coming in in one network card and you can have your network the it can share the network inside the server but you can also push the, the internet or the, the routed network out on the other port. And for this, there is a couple of products that I have been using. I've been using the DDVRT. It comes in a virtual appliance and it's really not using any memory at all. I think I was running this on 128 megabytes of memory and it was like using the 24 megabytes of memory. Uh, it was really efficient in that way. Um, I have since upgraded to PFSense, uh, which is a lot harder to use, but the, the first one is really good. It's really hard to install though, but it's really simple. It's, it has the same web interface as if you had a um, commercial router thing. That's really easy and it has been working great for years. So that's a good thing, really nice thing to do. When you have that up and running, which will take you, you can mingle with this for weeks. It's not that hard, but well, we always run into some difficulties with all this server equipment, don't we? Eight gigabytes of memory might not be enough, but I actually did a video where I ran 15 Windows 2008 servers on six gigabytes, um, 
I have to borrow one here, six gigabytes of memory. So when you have this up and running in VMware, which is free, uh, if you just have one server and two CPUs and as much memory as you can throw at it, and it doesn't cost anything. You don't get the really high-end features, but with one server, you don't really need them either. It's free. You can go to VMware's homepage. You have to open an account and blah, 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 but then you get the VMware ESXi 6.0 for free. And you can install all your servers and clients and stuff on that. So you can install your 10 plus Windows servers on that. Um, I ran 15 of them on six gigabytes of memory. They weren't doing anything. They were just there and they were on and they were sharing that memory. If I had been st if I had started to stress them, they would probably be eating up some more memory and maybe doing some not um, nice disk caching, but you can. And you can just turn off the equipment or the servers that you don't need. So you can run 10 Windows servers on that. Where do I put that? I'm running out of space here. There, right, yeah, 10 Windows servers. If you're not a Windows man, you can easily install 10 Linux servers as well, or Sun servers, or OS2, novel netware. There's a lot of stuff that will run on this. Even some Mac operation system, if you're lucky and can ninja hack that, you might be able to run those. You can do that. You can even run them at the same time. You can have 10 Windows server and 10 Linux servers. It's not a big deal, not at all. So this server, it does have some downsides as well. It's not new anymore. The, the memory speed is not as high as, it's not as high as new modern servers. So, but for the price you pay for a server like this, you get a lot of cash. <sighs> for the price you pay for this server, you get a lot of performance for that cash. And you get a lot of memory in this, uh, you get a lot of available memory in this server at least. You get a lot of storage available in this server as well. And you get a lot of... What else do you get a lot of? You get a lot of flexibility because you have a lot of space to run with. But it has some downsides. The memory speed is not that high. I do actually have some memory blocks sitting right here. So there are about... They don't say. Okay. I can't remember. Six to eight hundred megahertz. So it's, it's not the newest, it's not the newest thing, but it's still really, really strong. This server cannot do any GPU stuff. You can't pass through GPUs in VMware, which is one of the things that I play with. So for that purpose, this server is not the best choice. This server is not the most power efficient server either. It runs two CN processors and CN processors well, they're meant for stability and high performance. They didn't, really, um, they didn't really crank down the power that much. If I should recommend a really good CPU for it, it would be the E5450. That's a three gigahertz quad core, and it uses about 80 watts. Still a lot of power, I know. But you will get a server that will benchmark about the, around in the thousands. So. But that's pretty awesome for a 10 year old home server. So this is the server that I would recommend for someone that want to start out playing with servers at home. You can turn it off every night if you just have a room or something like that. And that's why you want to get a small solid state drive inside of it. It really don't need to be very big. You can get away with everything over four gigabytes, no problem. The server itself is really cheap. Many places in the world, the transportation of it will be the most expensive thing. Can't win all the time. I really recommend this. This is a brilliant server and it is also why I have nine of them in the racks, three on the shelf. Go look into this server, watch more of my videos on this server. I've made a bunch of them and um, Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.